Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. So with the ultimate tuning uh, kind of open and ready for update 1.34, I've been playing around with a lot more cars than usual and one that's come out of the blue is the Genesis G70, the road going version, uh, not any of the race versions and I think I've got a fairly solid 700pp build now up and running for this car. Now this is a car I've not seen many people use but it is a very affordable build so especially if you're early on or running out of credits this is a solid one to go for. As you can see the car will retail for 56,500 credits from the Genesis dealer in Asia. Now as you can see it's four wheel drive, 366 brake horsepower from standard, turbocharged however it does weigh quite a bit. Overall it's PP rating is 505.52. So we're going to have a look at the strengths and the weaknesses and basically play on each of those. So let's go ahead and just check out the car as a whole. So we do have a livery on this one and I do recommend putting this on. It will give you everything you need and everything I'm currently running with this build without having to do it separately. It's by Y Eagle. As you can see, it's a Genesis G70 FIA World Championship style livery. However, if you don't want to go down that route, you can do this. So it's 18 inch wheels, uh, wide rim width and wide offset. Just ensure you've got those enabled. And then we'll go ahead into the aero department. So if you go on custom parts at the front, it is going to be type A. And then at the sides and on the wing, so sides type A. And then on the wing, it's going to be a custom with a medium, style, uh, medium length wing with type 7 end plates. As you can see, you will need to have the wide body installed on this car to ensure that your aero parts do match up correctly and uh, kind of get this overall tune up and running so it is wide bodied not standard. So let's go into the tuning sheet. We are going to be running this on racing hards. Now this gives you an overall good tyre life. Overall I'm finding that this car is rather quite good on its tyres overall. We're going to run a fully customizable suspension with the body height at 120 at the front and 170 at the rear. Again this is something that's changed from the car you're going to see. I did have that far too low slung um, and I do find that this car runs much better with a decent rake on it. Um, so you do want the uh, rear end a lot higher than the front i was kind of trying to balance it out as low as possible but the car felt quite heavy anti-roll bar at the front is six and eight at the rear compression is going to be 40 for both so this is maximum same again with expansion at 50. natural frequency i've changed this a little bit so it's 270 front 280 rear originally i was more towards about three um, but i've turned that down a little bit negative camera angle two and 2.5 Toe angle at the front is 0.05 outwards, and then at the rear it's the opposite, so it's inwards at 0.15. We've got the fully customizable differential, so I've got the initial torque set at 5 for both. Acceleration sensitivity at the front is 10 and 15 rear. Braking sensitivity 5 at the front and 10 at the rear. Torque vectoring differential is set to 3070, but that is my personal preference. You can kind of do what you want with that. Then we do have the fully customizable racing transmission. I've not done individual gears, but I have set it up to 320. This gives you a nice high top speed and still retains decent acceleration. Eight gears in this car, by the way, so you can massively short shift it, save you fuel and still reach those high speeds. Ballast is going to be 38 with a positioning of minus 50. No power restriction on this build, just a little bit of added weight. No downforce at the front, but maximum at the rear at 200. High RPM turbocharger, anti-lag set to strong. Intercooler is going to be racing, racing air cleaner, racing silencer, racing manifold, racing slotted brake system, racing pads. We do have a brake controller, which you can, again, adjust on the fly to your preference. Then up here we have the racing clutch and flywheel, carbon propeller shaft, and then on permamods we have engine balance, polished ports, titanium connecting rods and pistons, racing crankshaft, weight reduction stage 1 to 3, and increased body rigidity. Overall this will give you dot on 700pp, putting out 650 brake horsepower almost, four wheel drive, this overall is a very solid build, and we've reduced a lot of the weight to now 1290 kilograms. And that brings me on to how is this car built? Well, it is mainly just to kind of take what is originally quite a heavy car 
line it up, make use of that four wheel drive system, which massively helps out with the dynamic weather of Le Mans. Um, obviously we do know at this point, quite often or not, more than not, it will rain there. It's quite rare you'll get, you know, a fully dry race. Overall, this car is solid on both the hard compound racing tires, as well as the inters and the heavy wets. Now the build you are actually going to see in the footage was my initial run, just while I'm kind of working out the strategy for this car and such. Um, since then, you will kind of be running a more up-to-date build. Um, I've run this one a couple of times now and I definitely feel that that rake is massively important. So whilst overall the speed and such is exactly the same um, and the strategy is exactly the same, it was just a bit of kind of fine tuning with the suspension just to get it feeling right. The one you're going to see in the video was rather quite stiff at times. I've hopefully resolved that with the updated tuning sheet. So how are we going to run this car? Well, with it being a road car with no engine swap, the first thing you're going to want to do is run it at fuel mix 6. This will allow you to get an average of 3 laps out. Um, but if you do want to go into quite heavy fuel saving, you can actually extend it up to four laps only just. It will require you to do a lot, a lot of short shifting, a lot of lifting and coasting. But it is possible if you kind of want to plan ahead for maybe a dry early stint. And especially if it's looking like it's not raining on lap two, this is what I fully recommend. Now, this is my initial run and my opening lap was a bit too aggressive using just a touch too much fuel, as you can see. Um, that's where the stiff suspension was kind of you know kind of playing up in some of these faster corners that has since been resolved with the suspension setting that i have currently given you so it's going to be a fuel mix six run um, in all honesty you don't need to touch that you can short shift quite a lot the turbo will do a lot of the work no matter what kind of rev you're at so um yeah kind of just let that pull you along eight gears in this car so it does hit a massively high top speed of over 200 miles per hour even at fuel mix six so I've got the AI difficulty set too hard. As you can see, we're going to take the lead going on to lap two. We've just got far too much straight line speed. We've got four wheel drive coming out of the corner, so we've got good acceleration. Overall, this is a very solid build. And as you can see, we're going to take the lead there and it is job done. Now, I do recommend actually on lap two, beginning to kind of monitor um, the, the weather and such, as well as beginning to do your fuel saving. So lift and coast into corners, get that short shifting done. Once you're in the lead, you're pretty much good to go. So as you can see, this is where we had a bit of rain coming in. So it was coming towards the end of lap two. I can see that this sort of rain coming in, but I'm not quite sure it's going to hit. Again, I'm just going to kind of stay out. If you do see the rain like this, don't worry. You don't necessarily have to jump straight in the pits. And again, it's going to pay off because we ended up with a nice dry patch by the time we got around to the end of lap three and we began to take our first pit stop. I did originally plan for rain, hence why I pushed a little bit harder than usual. And as you can see, we're going to get ourselves straight into the barrier. So we are going to do our first pit stop of the race. Um, we're not going to change tyres because obviously we're on the racing hards. This is a insanely durable compound now, um, especially since the physics changes. They just seem to absolutely last forever. Um, the only kind of tyre that will kind of wear is if, say, I put inters on in dry conditions uh, a little bit too early. They'll be rather quite warm by the time rain and such comes. So we're just going to keep the racing hards on. You can essentially do the entire race on these if you don't get rain. So, you know, if you are going to basically plan on doing a just a fuel stops every time and you've got no weather coming in, then you are good to go with those racing hards. So all we're going to do this time around is just take some fuel. And then again, because we've missed the rain, it's probably not going to come till later on. So all we're going to do is begin to lift and coast and kind of just take our time and uh, kind of see what happens with the weather for the next few laps. So average pit stop for most of the AI is going to be lap three anyway. Um, so you are basically covered off from those as well, even on like hard difficulty, which I'm currently on. So again, lap four and the rain is beginning to threaten it once again. We did begin to get some of it, but again, it just didn't get even into the inters conditions. However, onto lap four, this is where it's going to start changing. So we had one rain formation miss us yet again. So that's the second time. And we're getting into the later stages of the race. And as you can see just down below, there looks to be some more weather coming. And that's exactly what it was. This time, 
It wasn't going to miss. It did start absolutely throwing it down with rain, um, causing us to kind of skid off and such, but it does the exact same with the AI, so you don't need to worry too much if you begin making mistakes. We are obviously towards the end of the lap as well, um, and as you can see, by the time we was getting around to the pits, we still had a lap of fuel remaining, and we're just kind of you know skidding about and just having a bit of fun in it. So we are going to cover off the rain, so what we're going to do is go on to the inters, mainly because the rain formation was passing at this point, but the track is still going to be wet for the duration um, of this event remaining. So we've got around about eight minutes remaining. We're just going to go on the inters. We're going to take the fuel we need, um, and then we're going to do kind of a, a more pacey lap. So uh, sorry, more of a slow pace lap where we're going to kind of you know get the tires up to temperature, and um, just kind of potter around. Obviously, the, let the rain start drying up, and then um, onto the second lap, which will be our final lap. Um, we are essentially going to turn the engine up a bit um, just to kind of you know make use of the speed and kind of get the event done as close to that 30 minute gap as possible so we've got the inters put on the car we're then also going to take some fuel again i just recommend going for full fuel each time um, just to ensure that you don't run out at any point during the race you are then fully covered off um, from kind of you know running out of fuel and such in the middle of a lap um, you can just kind of monitor it on your kind of power uh, power output so kind of between power and lean so as you can see we're on to lap six here we've still got uh, just enough time to do another lap so we're going to go ahead and complete that um, we've only got around about three minutes left so all we're going to do is essentially just turn that engine up at this point that's all we need to do turn the engine up as you can see we used nearly 1.8 laps of fuel just doing that single lap at fuel mix one so it does drink it if you turn it up too much but we did manage to get it across the line nice and easy with a nice quick little lap there at the end so we did our best lap on um, lap seven which was a four minute 2.762 again that was in kind of intermediate tires and such so if you do get a good lap in and you can turn the engine up expect to get easily into the three minutes uh, we overall did a time of 30 minutes 52.381 but again it's a time limited limited event it doesn't matter too much and on hard difficult we had a gap of around about two minutes so pay out 800 125,000 credits as usual here and we're going to get that nice mileage done so it will get your mileage done if you do this event say once a day so there we have it this is a genesis g70 i've been building for uh, the last few days kind of refining it and such so the tune you are seeing is my more refined tune to the one that you actually saw in the kind of strategy to it overall this is a decent car it can save its fuel a lot better than i expected to be fair obviously we've got a ton of the weight removed and you know naturally this is a heavy car you've got eight gears four-wheel drive a huge turbo honestly it's a very very impressive car and a bit of a unsung hero in terms of cars that you know usually get picked for grinding money so that's going to be it for today's video don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe turn your notifications on so you don't miss an upload from me i have my twitter my discord and my donation link down in the description down below big thank you to my sponsors the controller people and poggers for their continued support they'll be in the description and a big thank you to all of my channel members if you do want to join i massively appreciate it have a fantastic day guys peace